Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Jide Remix Ultra tablet, which is an 11.6 inch tablet that runs Remix OS. It's a custom version of Android designed to look and feel a little bit more like Windows and support multitasking and productivity tasks. And it looks a lot like a specific Windows tablet. It looks a lot like the Microsoft Surface. And that's uh, partly because it's got this built-in kickstand and it comes with this keyboard cover. Uh, so let's take a little look at the hardware and then get into the software, which I think is really what makes this thing stand out. So uh, you can see in terms of the tablet itself, it's got this two-position kickstand on the back. It's got a metal cover, uh, very nice build quality, feels pretty sturdy, and when I'm not running a video, it's actually pretty easy to open this up. I'm having a little bit of difficulty right now. So we can lift it once, lift it twice, and that allows you to prop it up at two different angles. Most of the time, if you're using it sort of as a laptop, I find that uh, the angle you want is the, the first position. Also, underneath the, uh, the tablet uh, kickstand, you'll find an SD card slot. On the sides of the tablet, we've got a magnetic charging port, so uh, the adapter sort of goes right in there and stays, and you can see the light comes on when it's charging. There's a speaker, another one on the other side, micro USB port, and a headset jack. On the other side, we've got volume buttons and that other speaker. Camera on the back, power button, and that's about it. Down here, we've got magnetic connector for the keyboard. And let's take a quick look at this keyboard cover. It's got a sort of soft touch finish here, and it's a little bit of a dust magnet, I found. But it, uh, the keys, which are recessed a little bit from the, uh, the cover area, uh, feel really nice. I find that typing on this is uh, really pretty pleasant. And the touchpad, while it looks a little funny, because it's sort of built into this almost velvety uh, surface, the touchpad actually is pretty nice and responsive. So let's go ahead and hook it up, turn it on, and unlock. So, um, first thing, let's just go ahead and fire up a web browser here. The tablet has an NVIDIA Tegra 4 quad-core processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage. Um, for the most part, that's good enough for most of your uh, activities. You know, so, you know, zoom in could be a little bit faster, um, but it sure does a pretty good job of running applications, games, videos, and so forth. And it also supports multi-touch gestures like Windows, including two-finger scrolling. Now, down here at the bottom, what you might notice that you don't see on a lot of Android tablets is a taskbar. So we can actually minimize and maximize applications pin applications, so say that you want to use the Marvel Unlimited app all the time, you can pin that right down there so that even if you switch to different views on the home screen, it's available. Now you still can swipe down from the top to get to your settings and notifications, but they look a little bit different here. So we've got a volume or a brightness control, power, screenshot, mute, vibration, GPS, airplane, and a couple of other settings in there. And down here at the bottom, we can click this little button for different purposes depending on what we're doing. Let me bring this a little closer so you can see. Uh, right now it's showing memory, but when I open an application, it shows me options for full screen or phone or quit app. Now in this particular application, there's no support for phone mode. So let's go ahead and bring up an app that does support phone mode and show you how multitasking works here. So this is the Firefox web browser and it's running as if it were running on a phone. So you can see it's a smaller window and that lets us do some interesting things. So I'm opening YouTube here and I'm opening it in full screen. I'm going to switch to phone mode. It says switching will restart the app, so it's doing that. And now I can pull up a YouTube video. bring the volume down so you can hear me, and uh, so I can do some web surfing while I'm watching a video. Now, it's this window here is not resizable, which can be a little bit frustrating, um, but you can move it anywhere you like. So we're watching the video in one window, and reading the news in another, checking out some deals. So you've got support for true multitasking, and if I wanted, I could open up a couple more windows here. Now, uh, as I pointed out, not all applications support uh, window sort of phone mode. So full screen is the only option for the default web browser, for instance. But as we pointed out here in Firefox, we can do either or. You'll notice it's 
uh, in terms of multitasking, it did pause this video when we switched. Now, some of the applications that come uh, preloaded on the tablet include a file manager. And if this looks familiar, it's because it's very reminiscent of the, uh, the Windows 8 sort of user interface. So uh, we've got the file manager, which is divided up into sort of this colorful green and, and white section here. Uh, a couple of other things. The settings also look very Windows uh, 8 style. There's a couple of features in here that you won't find in your, uh, your typical windows, including these experimental always open in landscape mode options. And there's a built-in system updater so it can check for updates automatically and download the latest version. Uh, this button over here takes you to the home screen. You can also go to the home screen from within an app by uh, pressing the center button, which would normally, it's the jide button in this case, it would be a Windows key on a Windows tablet. And sometimes I find myself uh, getting a little confused because I do spend time with Windows tablets. I kind of want to close the app by pulling down from the side of the screen or switch between apps from going from the side, which is something that you could do with a Windows tablet, but not this one. So you do have to get used to the gestures if you're used to Windows. Um, tablet itself has a full HD 11.6 inch screen. I find that it works great for um, reading text or pictures, watching videos. Let's go ahead and fire up a little comic book here. And it does support screen rotation, so we can switch and read this in sort of a more traditional comic book style. Now with an 11.6 inch screen, I find it's a little awkward to hold if you're gonna do it that way, but it does work. And uh, let's do a little gaming. One thing I found that's uh, kind of interesting here is if you hold it in your two hands from the bottom, you might have a sort of weird experience with the audio because you're covering the speakers. In games that auto-rotate, you can just hold it upside down and it's not an issue, but some games don't work quite as well as others. So I've noticed, for instance, there's a few interesting things here about this Tai Chi Panda game. Uh, it's a fun game to play, but it doesn't auto-rotate, so you're kind of going to have to cover it with your hands if you're playing, and you notice that the taskbar doesn't go away while you're playing, which can be a little annoying. But the game works pretty well. The Tegra 4 processor is not the newest chip on the market, but it's good enough for your basic gaming and video tasks, like I said. Now other games, uh, I'm not going to bother going through the loading screens and everything for them, but other games, the taskbar will disappear. So certain apps work in full screen mode and others don't. Uh, in terms of documents, uh, something else that you might want to do on a productivity focused tablet. Um, some applications support full screen mode and others don't. Google Docs. Oops. Google Docs works fine, if I can type properly. Um, and so you can see we've got uh, basic formatting and support for uh, keyboard shortcuts here. There are also keyboard shortcuts for brightness, volume, and other uh, features. So overall, it's not exactly like a Windows tablet, even though we've got applications that look like they're Windows applications, uh, even though we've got support for uh, running applications that are not full screen and that are movable, um, it's not quite the same because you do wind up with situations like having a web browser that um, is sort of the small window here, um, and you do have applications that are designed for Android as opposed to for desktop, so the uh, the experience might not be the same. But that said, it comes pretty close to offering what it promises, which is a more productivity, multitasking-oriented version of Android called Remix OS. Um, this isn't uh, necessarily my uh, my final conclusion. I just wanted to sort of post some more details after spending a little more time with the tablet. You can also check out my initial unboxing and first look, which is available at uh, YouTube. And um, and yeah, so overall, I'm pretty impressed with what this $399 tablet has to offer. The first uh, 400 people who uh, pledged on Kickstarter to support the campaign uh, uh, managed to reserve models that are going for $39 or $199, and I think it's a stellar value at that point. Whether it really can hold its own against other Android tablets or Windows tablets in the future remains to be seen.
This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.